evening and welcome to this wonderful night of music and we are so looking forward to this. I can honestly say well good evening and welcome to um, our country music female this week. I have been looking forward to this all week long I gotta tell you it's been amazing just going through the names and looking back even after we had done this last week and we had looked at all the males um, we left out so much there too which is I think was why we're gonna have a third week of this at some point but I didn't want to leave it alone and not have time to focus on the women of country music and it's just incredible I'm so happy to bring this to you and I hope that you'll be enjoying this right now we are talking about the country and Western music of all time, and there's so many names that in an hour, I am sure, just like last week, I will not get to all of them. But I really want to get to this um, right away so we don't lose any time. So thank you, welcome, and tell everybody about this too because we just want to talk to you guys. And we really want to, uh, you know, have, have a good good moments, set of moments here. So welcome to Country Music. Live about female artists. And there you go. There's a the kickoff. I even had the country uh, music ready to go for you as well. So here we go. Where do we begin? There is so much to say. Let's start with the very, very beginning. And we'll talk again about the Carter family because the Carter family was a mix of, of course, different people within that family. There were two females in the Carter family. And we talked about this last week. Um, they record from 1927 to 1956, bluegrass, country, gospel, and so on. They were fantastic, and you really want to look at that. The Carter family were from Poor Valley, Virginia, and in some ways that describes a lot of country music, Poor Valley, because many of them grew up dirt poor um, when they started, and they grew up in the American South. And to, to make this more clear, uh, places like Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee would be the places that they went to. But of course, there's a connection to Ireland too because many Irish people moved into Georgia, came on the boats from the foil, and of course, they settled in places like Tennessee as well. So we see those names showing up all the time. Let's talk about one of those right away, Jimmy Lou Carson, Jenny Lou Carson, who in 45 wrote, you two time me, you one time too often. And songs like that that we make, you know, the tear in the beard kind of songs. This is the kind of things that we're talking about. Unbelievable. Patsy Montana as well. First female country singer to sell one million records. One million records. Now at the time, when you look at that and think about the fact that she was able to do that, you have to think in terms of, you know, we'd say one million, 30 million, 50 million, we're talking about really, really large numbers. But a million would have been a lot in those days. And really in her time, when she was born in 1908, she really only came into her own and with all of her music in the 1950s. Um, actually, I should say after the 1950s, she pretty much was was only part-time doing it, but in the 1950s themselves, she was a big name. And if you go back to uh, Montana Plains, 1934, I Want to Be a Cowboy Sweetheart. So when you say a million, that's a lot for that time period. And so again, I'll mention her name, Patsy Montana, great, great, lo lovely woman, and a great uh, singer too. The first woman I want to focus in on, though, in terms of the music for you, is somebody named Minnie Pearl. And people over in the States probably know her very, very well, but she may not have been as well known over in Ireland and other parts of the world. She was not only just a female singer, but also she was very much a comedian. And she put the two of it together and made her kind of, you know, her stamp on things. She always wore a hat that had a... Um, 
the, the tag from when she would have bought it from, you know, wherever she would have bought it, from whatever shop she would have bought. And it was sort of her trademark. And she was always with other men around her who were big lead men. And she would just walk in and just kind of carry the conversation. And she was kind of that down home woman that we think of in that time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that up right away. I want you to be able to see that. Um, if you have never heard of her or who she is, have a good look at that because it's funny. And if you if you listen to more of her work, you'll see that she was able to do that. And I find that very interesting too because sometimes we don't think of that you know in terms of both. But even uh, Johnny Cash was very funny with June, and they would you know kind of you know back and forth and back and forth to and fro. So country music, even at times when we consider it to be kind of very sad. Um, when the stage show came, it was very, very funny. The other reason why we wanted to do this week, and I'll get on to many in just a moment, but one of the other reasons why we wanted to do this was to share with um, people who come to our school who might be female artists, especially who want to be singers. And we can teach you how to do this kind of music and other kinds as well, gospels, uh, all sorts of jazz music, because there is a style that's very, very unique. And you can really, as um as the lads can learn something from it as well. I've learned so much from singing um, some of their music as well. Um, so Wendy Pearl was called Sarah Ophelia Colley. Colley, C-O-L-L-E-Y, very interesting name. There might be a connection there. And she was born in um, Nashville. I'm uh, sorry, in, she was born in Centerville, Tennessee, but she died in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, she basically stayed around that part of um, the world that was her area and she was the youngest of five daughters who came from a fellow who was a lumberman but she came out as this woman you know young youngest sometimes the youngest are the are the comedians um people know about families and she majored in theater arts and dance unsurprisingly she had a massive massive career she i think it was a 50-year career of many pearl did and we love her and beautiful uh, style and sensibility and the funniest <laughs> person you can even imagine is coming up. And it was, as I said, very down-home funny. Okay, so have a look at that if you haven't seen her before. One of the other ones I wanted to mention in the early days was Kitty Wells. And, you know, <laughs> she was called some something else. And in the early days, she was really the first one that really, in terms of country music, became a real star. She was named Ellen Muriel Deason, as it turns out. And she broke down that barrier to country music in terms of, um, especially in the 1950s, when, you know, when we were thinking about June Carter Cash. And I'll even mention that a bit more because she obviously is one person we want to talk about in the early days. But uh, June Carter and Kitty Wells and people like that broke down this barrier where really early on for female country singers, it wasn't quite the thing and it wouldn't have been um, front and center. We talked about this with female rock and rollers too, um, that some, some, as some years it took for them to become I'd say the leads in some ways in the 20-teens and 2020s. I hear their music so much, and it's been refreshing, to be honest. Very, very refreshing. So um, have a listen to her. And I think I brought this up last week, and I'm going to put it back up. Um, one of the videos that we did was Jackson from both Johnny and June Carter. And... And for many people in that time period, that would have been a big hit. Uh, Jackson, lovely Jackson. I think it was Jackson, Mississippi. I think I have that right. And I'm going to put that up in just a moment. So I'm just going to put that up there for you. See, Johnny was so in love with her. I mean, I think he was married at the time, and he, you know, it's like he was listening to June on the radio because, I, as I understand, he she would have been older than him, um, and he really 
just fell head over heels with her and eventually they married and uh, who could blame her she was amazing amazing woman and go back and listen to jackson i've just put that up there for you go ahead and have a we listen spend a little bit of time listen to the way the two of them pair off each other and how they kind of integrate that music and we've seen this a few times over the years where a man and a woman come together especially when it comes to country music and really light it up i'm going to share with you one right now just so you can think about it this is one that when i think of you know, duets, this is definitely one of those. I'm even gonna put it on there and let you have a good wee listen to it. So if you come back from one, you wanna go back and listen to the other one with um, Kenny Rogers and of course Dolly Parton on this one with Island in the Stream. And such a great, Islands in the Stream was such a big hit. And when you look at People like Hitty, and you look at people like, of course, June Carter, they set the tone for people like Dolly to come in. And Dolly, when people think about Dolly's period of time when she became, you know, she was in the early days, but it was more 60s, 70s, and 80s, so by then, female uh, country singers were very, very popular by then. So June and Kitty really set the pace for all this. So go ahead and have it. I'm just listening to it right now. I, it's a great old song. So have a listen to that. I'm just gonna let you sit with that just a wee moment and Remember that two good singers, especially male, female, especially in country music, can really make something happen. So if you are interested in singing and you're interested in country music, both male and female, you might even think of pairing up with somebody else to get that blend of music together. It's not that it's not possible individually, but it just seems to be some kind of magic. And you can see it through both Johnny's um uh, and June's video, and also this one here, Dolly and Kenny. Okay, so. Okay, so if you've gone, you've looked at that, you're coming back, just give me a bit of commentary. What do you think about what you're seeing so far? What do you think about the women of country music and how that, you know, compares to what we did when we talked about the men of country music last week? Yeah. While I said that a good duet works, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that every woman has to pair up with somebody else in order for it to sound good because there are so many great ones out there. And I'm going to talk a bit about this one right now. Emmy Lou Harris. What an amazing, amazing singer. And for her time, I really believe that for country music, it was really that kind of time where they really needed someone like that. She was born in Birmingham, Alabama. And you would think about that in terms of, of course, what happened in the 1960s in the States. And she has traveled the world doing her kind of music, which I consider in some ways to be, you know, it is country and folk somewhat together. And if you haven't listened to it, give a listen to the one I'm about to put up here for you because it just brings it what I call that down home kind of feeling. And this is a very older picture of her when she had uh, the long hair. Um, and in the early days, in the 1970s, she really brought together what I think of in some ways like the time period around Oh God! You know, the uh, the great female singers of 1970s, and we're still in f into folk music. And she wrote one after another. It was just amazing. So I'm going to put that up there for you. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what she is like, Emmy Lou Harris. And I know I've left so many others out. Again, we only have one hour to do this, but. I'm going to just gonna pull that back and talk about Emmy. And it turns out that uh, this, you know, this this part of what took place with Emmy, 
you know, she was in a couple bands, and she was with Graham Parsons, if you know anything about that. But she came from a military family, and her, her dad was in the Marine Corps, and the mother, of course, was a military life wife at the time. And coming from that type of experience, she dropped out of college to pursue her musical aspirations, which I'm sure was not an easy thing on the family because thinking about that, and of course, even we talked about um, John Denver, and of course, he had a father who was in the military who really was against his doing what he was doing. He changed his surname, called himself Denver. And if you if you moved out of that kind of area, it was expected that they probably would have done the same thing. Okay, marry another um, military man, but she didn't do that. And she married eventually a fellow, Tom Slocum, who became her fellow songwriter. And in 69, they recorded the first album. Unfortunately, they divorced not too long after. But she worked in Roots Records and was on the pop charts for years. 81, she was still running. 1990, she still was, although not in the mainstream, but she was on the country station still. And new country formats, of course, came out with all of this. And when I say that, there was a change, of course, and we know with Garth Brooks and so on, and a lot of new female artists came out of that particular uh, generation. And just like we saw the change in uh, rock and rollers uh, becoming more and more female, the same thing was happening in country music as well. So take a listen to her. And I think you'll really, really... Um, she sang with Willie Nelson, too. Um, I think they were saying yeah, she joined Sarah McLaughlin All Woman Musical Tour at the Little Fair. And, of course, everybody knows Sarah McLaughlin. A great singer as well so don't forget to have a few good listen to each one of those and tell me what you think about the people you're talking um, to other people about do they know these singers do you want to be like that of course I don't want to forget to let you know of course at Belfast Dream School of Music we want to help you to become the star yourself even if it's a star just for your, you, if it's a star for your family, if it's a star for the local community, or if you really want to be that big, big star, we'll show you how to do that as well because we have the background to get you there. So have a listen to those three, okay? Moving on from there, there was another female singer that probably came through and you would hear her name and then it might pass you by. You wouldn't really know the name, maybe even with the songs that she was involved with. But in New Jersey, here comes someone out of New Jersey who's working in country and pop rock and suddenly becomes a big name. And almost out of nowhere, Judy K. Newton became Juice Newton. And she ha was associated with people like Dolly and Roseanne Cash and um, Crystal Gale and Alabama and so on. Juice Newton had a, an amazing career. A, 1977 Ebony Eyes. It's a heartache. People know that song. It's a heartache. But I've put another one up there for you. And you'll probably know this song as well. And it's called Angel of the Morning. And I think that everybody has probably heard of it before. But it doesn't, you know, you don't know Juice, Juice's name. But have a listen to that. Juice Newton right there. Angel of the Morning. Good stuff. So there we go. First number of really amazing female singers. And I'm going to step back a little bit and go back to some people who really are great that I, I don't know that I'll have enough time, maybe the next time that we do this, but we'll talk a bit about them. And there's a couple names like Tanya Tucker in the 1970s to the late 1990s, who was a teen country star. And she spent well beyond the 10 years. I mean, she really was there for quite a long time. Tanya Tucker would have been a great um, country musician and um, lovely, incredible voice. She had a presence. Most of us know presence, what that means. She had a presence on stage. And oftentimes, no matter who you are, if you're a soloist, one of the things is you have to have a presence on stage. And that's one of the things that we teach here. Tanya Tucker, uh, who was born in Seminole, Texas in 1958. Um, she's amazing. 
So she she has gone on and on. I'm just looking at some of the labels she's been on. Columbia Records, Cash, Capital Nashville, Liberty, Capital, uh, Tucker Time I'm Lucky. That must be another uh, a record label that she either promoted her time. But in 73, she really came out and became that teen star that some people always wanted to be. I mean, there's loads of teens now. When I go online, some of you who bring that music to us, and it's great because you show us and share with us some wonderful teens. I mean, I'll even spend another time, maybe I should even do a, a decade of the teens because there's been some great ones, and I will include her in there. And... I know that um, she had a bit of a decline during one part of her life, but like many singers, um, oftentimes uh, life comes in between, and eventually she came back in 1986 uh, to 1997 and was amazing. And she still has a career. She still is going right now. And if you look at the way she sort of presents herself as a country music singer, you sort of see this commonality we see this of course when people talked about freddie mercury you know we're talking about rock and roll that presence and you too when we talk about bono these women come out and you know whether it's uh flashy or in in different ways they 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 pull the stage towards them they pull people towards that stage and show them who they really are and when you listen to them and they hear them talk and tell the stories in some ways today i find that in some ways the females and i are a lot of storytellers as well and i think of country music as being perhaps one of those things that kicked that off and even going back to juice newton as well Okay, so we're up and we're moving around to different places. And before I go back in history and dial it back, I want to talk about a very, very famous and a very amazing, amazing singer. I mean, she could make the lads cry. I'm not joking too. Her name is Trisha Yearwood. And Trisha Yearwood was from Monticello, Georgia, and still is. <laughs> she was born in 64. And she has had an amazing amount of singles and has been, I mean, you just listen and you're drawn in to this person's storytelling. Um, she's an amazing, I'm going to put one up for you right now. This was came off the uh, television show today and she sings for the last time live. And I'm going to talk about this a bit because we mentioned this in past weeks, how when good musicians become really amazing, they start using other instruments to help their um, their stage show. And we mentioned this, of course, in terms of the Beatles and in terms of the Beach Boys. But in this example where she's got a great set of musicians behind her, it has a very jazzy feel, even though it's very much a country song. So go ahead. You'll hear that jazz, and you can hear that country sound behind her. One of the things that I noticed right as I'm listening to her, the storytelling and the elongation of the vowels and the expression. And I sometimes remember when we were talking about jazz the same way, some of the female artists like that who could really pull a song, and I mean elongate a song and make every every line in and every verse become a story unto itself. Have a listen to some of Trisha Yearwood's music. And if you just like to have a, a nice evening on a Saturday night or even a Sunday night, I'd put that on for sure. There we go. And we're about 25 minutes into our show so far. I'm just having the time of my life and I can see my wife there is uh, looking at me and thinking, I hear a different person this week. <laughs> Another woman who really uh, stands out for me is uh, Reba McIntyre. Reba McIntyre was from McAllister, uh, Oklahoma. And she has been an amazing, amazing singer. And like everybody, they have kind of, 
these breakthroughs and their ups and their downs. And there was an amazing situation that happened to her. She lost eight members of her band in one go in a plane crash. Of course, we know um, we've heard something like that in the past. Bye Bye Miss American Pie, of course, celebrates part of that uh, that took, took place with three male singers, but eight members um, were lost in a crash near San Diego, California in 1991. And of course, it would have Im if impacted anybody, of course. But I think that sometimes these tragedies have a way of creating new songs out of them, especially when it comes to country music. You just take those lines about your feelings and you just write them out and suddenly what was poetry becomes country music. And we've seen this with Dylan, of course, because Dylan wrote some sounds that sound like country, like Wagon Wheel, <laughs> which was made famous more in the country music era, but really was his, his song. And I'm just going to mention a few of her songs because they're just dynamite. Reba McIntyre. And I'm going to go through this, and this is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm just looking at things that she appeared in, and she's been in theater and television, and she's been in films, uh, but albums like For My Broken Heart and Keep On Loving You and Love Somebody, What If It's You. And in 1990, during those times, rumor has it, and all those things that we just talked about, those were particularly amazing albums. So have a good one. And there is a discography, if I'm looking correctly, Reba uh, McIntyre's in 1986. And Feel the Fires in there and so on. I think I have one of her cuts here that I'm going to put on the screen in just a moment. Of course, it's hard to miss the fact that some of these people had Irish surnames or Scottish surnames somewhere in the back of, of all of it. We see uh, again and again people who moved over to the States. This particular song, Fancy, is one of those uh, country songs I think of that has a bit of an attitude. And there's a lot of them. I mean, Dolly Parton has that in some of her music as well. And initially, when we talked last week about country music, we said, okay, here's this kind of the outlaw country music. And they had kind of an attitude going on there. And sometimes the lyrics were very, very out there as well. But Reba kind of has that style as well. You need, you need that. And in 1980s, this would have been a great time for that kind of... Um, that kind of music, because during that time, in terms of rock and roll, a lot of it, of course, was, you know, the keyboards, and it was I Will Fly Away, and it's all of that, and Adam Ant. And to contrast that, there's a lot of, of course, female singers, of course, like Madonna and all of them. But in the country world, of course, the same thing was going on there, too, because people, you know, mirror each other, they go off and they uh, they listen to each other and then they write these other songs and it doesn't matter what the genre is. And this one by Reba is just an amazing... We're talking in terms of our um, our experience in life. There's a great one there from Reba McIntyre. So go ahead, as I said, as always, go off for a couple minutes and have a second to listen to a few of these because they're well worth it. And as always, I always want to tell you that at uh, our school, we're open to all types of music. We teach everything from gospel to country to jazz music and of course a lot of rock and roll people like it but we also do Disney stuff if you're a child and you are if you are a parent and you've got children we do a lot of Disney music as well and we 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 use and we mix a lot of all of this so you can learn a country song one week and you're a rock and roll song next week and we'll come up with something else uh, the week after as we'll so have a listen to that Going back on the list and looking back in the real past,
past. I mean, going back in the early innovators, I always like looking back at the early innovators and see, and we talked about, of course, Patsy Montana, but I don't think I mentioned the Girls of the Golden West, too, because it was a female duo, the Girls of the Golden West, in the 1930s and 1940s. And I'm just going to pull this up to you really quick because I want you to get a sense of how this sort of moved from the 1920s on. People were dark par, and they lived in the middle of the American country. And a lot of times there were cyclones and, you know, very difficult weather. People know, of course, about, you know, uh, Mississippi and, of course, New Orleans and places like that when the waters rise. But it sometimes is missed that there are other things that go on, like hurricanes and cyclones and so on. And these particular uh, lasses, the girls of the Gold West American duo, uh, Mildred uh, Good and, uh, sorry, Dorothy Good, very, very early on came from Mount Carmel, Illinois. It's not a place you typically think of, but some parts of even places in Illinois would be um, towards the south, would reach into the southern areas. And you can look back at Lonesome Cowgirl and that was their signature tune and Renfro Valley barn dance and so on. And of course, a lot of the music would have been played at barn dances and Sadie Hawkins as well. Okay, so have a look at that to you. I was going to mention one other thing in regards to that. When you're going back and listening to the songs, especially if you happen to be a female singer, don't forget to really, f you know, you can always turn the any of the YouTubes down by half. You can change the speed and it allows you to really sort of see what they're doing and lilting through the song. And when I say lilting, that's kind of the ebb and the flow of the music. And that just makes things more interesting because if they just sang it straight through, we would not, not find it very interesting after the first sing. And then we put something else on, of course. But it's this movement of up and down and up and down and up and down that really makes um, any singer, whether male or female, come through. But there you go. There's some great, great people at that period. Um, of course, June Carr, we talked about her. And June was also a comedian, too. We talked about this whole idea with Minnie Pearl and this comedian idea. And, of course, Johnny, you know, tried to chime in, too. I think he was less of a, you know, comedian per se. But she was big time. Um, that was a big part of her show was keeping audiences entertained. And when you're dealing with uh, the Grand Opera, you know, it's it's a whole stage show. And um, you're doing more than just that. So if you have a few jokes in you, it might not be <laughs> a bad idea to throw those in if that's something that you want to do uh, with country music. Okay. I'm going to mention this woman who I think really had an amazing career. And again, sometimes we really forget these people. Somehow they fall off the radar and then it doesn't show up again. Barbara Mandrell was an amazing singer for her time. She would have been well, well, well known at that time. And she was born, of course, in Houston, Texas. And they called her the sweetheart of the steel. And I agree with that because there's steely music in her um, in her country. She performed at the Grand Ole Opera like many of them did. But I think the thing that stands out for me is, again, sometimes when people become uh, connected to other singers and they have a group or they form a group or it's like a male-female, sometimes they get lost in it. But don't forget that she did a great set of duets with Lee Greenwood. Again, great country. And it should have been Love by Nye. That's a great uh, top 20 hit. And then for a bit of a while, she had a bit of a setback because she was in an automobile accident. And unfortunately, she had fractures in her leg. And like with anything, we've noticed this kind of this period where it seems like something happens and it just shakes things up. And there's nothing wrong with that because oftentimes that becomes a part of the music that you're going to write in the future. And she has been in television and she has been in acting. And just thinking about the kind of awards this woman had. Barbara Mandrell, Female Artist of the Year, Entertainer of the Year. This is 79, 80, 81. Comedian of the Year, Female Artist of the Year, 81, not 82, 83. I could just go on and on. 
through the entire 80s, all around female performer, favorite female country artist, and so on. This woman had an amazing career. Barbara Mandrell could really pull people in, in the same way we've been talking about, like June Carter, June Carter Cash. And, it, and really, whether you're just doing it for your friends, or you're doing it for family, it's really good just to have a, l a few items in the bow um, to uh, enjoy everybody and, and good storytelling and good comedian, good fun. It all seems to come together. And when I think of country music in a way, a lot of it has its roots in Ireland. So speaking of Ireland, I'm just going to just walk away from the American scene for a moment and talk a bit about the Irish scene because believe it or not, it's had quite um, and involvement in our lives here in Ireland. The female singers, female Irish country. One of the people I want to bring to your attention right away is going to be Bonnie Stewart. And I'm going to put her up here so, just so you can see it. Female Irish singers. And you'll listen and you'll think, my God, that could have come out of anywhere uh, within America, but it came right from here. The thing I think about with Bonnie, and I see this a lot, is kind of an updated, upbeat version of some older songs. And this Gypsy Rover version, we heard this all over the 1980s and 1990s, where the songs in Ireland, the country music, was kind of just rolled up a bit. And it had still of Ireland sitting inside of it. You could hear it. But at the same time, it was still very much country music. And when I say that, it's just a bump, 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 a bebop kind of hit. Um, that you recognize in the background of it. And one after another, one after another, you'd hear these um, wonderful uh, lasses come out and do their their um, their bit in terms of uh, country music. I'm going to put another one up there. I think I might have forgotten to put that one up. Let me just make sure that you got a chance to see that. Yes, I did. And, of course, we're just going to put up another one here. So here's one I'm going to put up in here. It was uh, done by Louise Morrissey. And as soon as that times out, we're going to put that up there for you because, again, and you'll be hearing some wonderful references to Ireland. where the country music becomes a real part of Irish music. Unlike the last one we heard from Bonnie, one of the things that I find with this particular song is we're talking now about Irish counties. And anybody who has spent a bit of time in Ireland or knows a bit about Ireland, there's been a lot of country music just about the county that, that they came from. That is, they sang about the counties. And I think I shared a song last week uh, from Big Tom, um, Pretty Little Girl from Oma. There were a lot of songs like this that would mention the hills, the dales, and parts of, just like in country music in America, it would be repeated, but in terms of Ireland, uh, unsurprisingly. So have a listen to that, and realize there's plenty more where that came from, because these lasses can run it. I mean, there's some great, great songs from all of them, and I am just am proud to throw some of those at you um, today. I think there was one more I wanted to give to you um, before we move back. Um, and this is funny because <laughs> the Ben sisters who did this recorded the Inn at Inish Free, and of course we know a song called The Isle of Inish Free, and interestingly enough, they did it in Inish Free. <laughs> So 
So here's what I'm telling you. If you're planning to come in back to Ireland, if you haven't been in a while, you'll want to go back to... Um, you want to go back and listen to the music from the West. This is where you're going to hear most of this kind of music. I'm just going to leave you with that. That's a wonderful song. Okay. I think I was getting so involved in that particular style of music, I think I lost myself, and I just lost myself inside there for a moment. What I was saying was, if you're going to come and you want to listen to really good country music, try going to the west of Ireland, because it, from Cork, through Limerick, through Shannon, all the way up into Mayo and Sligo, you'll hear this type of music, um, along with just standard um, Irish music. You'll hear people singing this, and suddenly you're, you're almost transformed. It's it's not the country music that you hear in the States so much, um, in terms of like eating dirt. That's how I think about it. It's like it's literally coming off of dirty plains. You know, this is just over hill, over dale type. Uh, parts of Donegal. Uh, and and the, the discussions, of course, about the parts of Ireland and what it means to all of us. Have a good listen to that on those last three. Again, before we go there, I want to talk about one more artist here. And this was in the early days of country music. And oftentimes, because we were separated by miles of ocean, unlike today, I mean, we can listen to each other almost readily, just like we're doing right now. It could be from here to Australia. We miss singers like this. And speaking of Australia, that's the one I'm going to share with you. Her name is Shirley Toms. And when you go back to the early days of country music, she was one of the first influential women 1941, and again, talking about, you know, places like Queensland, <laughs> here we are, 1941, Queensland, and talking about Australia. Great stuff. So have a listen to that. Shirley Toms, you know, in the early days of the 1940s, and you could see again that kind of, you know, it's kind of quick stuff, almost a little bebop-ish, you know, before 1990s ever showed up, but very, very little in terms of, you know, backing uh, instruments and such, you know, it would have been very much, you know, one person, a guitar, maybe a bass player, you know, upright bass player um, along with them. If you're lucky, you got a fiddle player somewhat in between all of that. So I hope you're enjoying all of this. This is great. I am just loving this, and I know that, you know, my wife is looking over me and thinks that I could go on for another two hours, which I probably could. So what will happen is next week we're going to do a mix of both male and females, whoever we didn't really touch on in the last two weeks. The last fortnight, we're going to look back and catch up with some of the names that, as I was looking back on the sheet, I just never caught to. It's uh, one of those things you can just go on and on and on. Okay, so who else are we talking about? Well, going back to the female singers that I think we talked about, uh, Reba McIntyre, and now I'm going to talk about this particular person, Martina McBride. Unbelievable. Martina McBride from... Sharon, Kansas, United States. She was born there, but her origins really were Nashville, and she really spent most of it there. And Martina McBride had, actually her name was Martina Schiff. Um, this, this woman could really <laughs> mix country and pop, but she was also known for the fact that she could sing soprano. And I think, am I right, I'm just going to ask my wife here very quickly, that Lady Gaga had uh, a very much, you know, she had an amazing um, level and wide uh, singing, I think, into the soprano area too. But if you listen to Martina, and I'm just going to put one up of hers, this is fantastic stuff too. Again, oftentimes people start out in other genre, and you never know where they could land, and suddenly... They hit the right point and they get the right kind of music. 
on this song anyway. So if the first thing doesn't work out for you, and we're talking to our students, so if the first thing doesn't work out for you, try other music. I mean, you never know. Sometimes people start off in the rock and roll area, and then they realize, hey, country is really my deal. I like that. Or I like jazz so much. I'd really rather play that. Um, sometimes what we start with doesn't always resonate um, later on. And I think for myself in particular, I know that I have moved through different genres my whole life. Um, and I love it. And in a way, I've come full circle in presenting all this to you that I can share with you all these different parts of music. And it gives you a sense of where you might go. Okay, I like this, I don't like that, or I moved on to this. I like the country, I don't really like the rock anymore. Because people change, they get older, they change their styles of music. So have a good one, have a laugh with uh, thinking about that for a moment. But go ahead and listen to Martina. She's an incredible voice. Love her so much. Of course, we couldn't leave all of that without talking about more of our newest artists. And I think you'll recognize the name, Shania Twain. For younger people, this person, Eileen Regina Edwards, Eileen Twain, Shania, as she became country singer, but also Canadian. A lot of Canadian singers, too, female Canadian singers, are showing up on this um, on this chart. And I just love her sign. She's this kind of a sassy um, attitude to what she does in terms of international uh, music has become, I mean, international pop has had an amazing career and she's still i think so very young in 2004 to 2010 um and then of course she comes back again in another uh way in 2011 through 15 and really i think now she's uh las, <laughs> las vegas she lives out there in that area i'm gonna put one of hers up right now because shania is incredible and if you like that kind of music, if you like that kind of, you know, saucy country, and again, we talked about, you know, country music with attitude. <laughs> this is one you're going to want to listen to. It definitely has that kind of young person's uh, experience with uh, country music, Shania Twain. Have a listen to that right now, and I'll talk about it very, very quickly. It starts off, if you haven't listened to it, um, with her kind of on the... Uh, desert plains with all of her gear and she's kind of sitting out and very much a poppy country and you'll know this right away you know some motorcyclist comes by and she's kind of pulling her everybody's attention anybody who's coming by But again, I think that if you're you're a young person and you're looking for something to really grab onto, Shania, and I remember that she's not the only twain that's out there. If you look at Shania and you look at women from that era, you can see that it's getting saucier and a bit more interesting and we're going to break out and we're going to do something different than we did before, thinking about... Uh, Songs like The Woman in Me, Come On Over, Up and Now, you know, Up or Now. And she even has a star on the Canada, Canada's Walk of Fame. So there you go. I didn't even know that. And she continues to uh, work with other people, headline tours with Toby Keith and John Brennan. And again, Shania is still out there. She's doing her stuff. 2019, let's go. Have a listen to that. That is some great stuff. So, so far, we have covered a lot of ground in such a short period of time. I'm going to mention another Canadian, too, because oftentimes they're overlooked. And they sort of, again, we know the names. We kind of know who they are or maybe what they do. But Katie Lang is one of those people I know because I've listened to her for so long. Katie Lang is an amazing Canadian country singer and 
I apologize that uh, this computer is slowing down just a wee bit, but uh, we'll have that up there. But Katie Lang has had an amazing career. And I remember listening to her, it must be a good 20 years now, and she has really risen um, as a female country artist. Really love this type of stuff. It's fantastic. So if you haven't listened to her or live and listened to her in a while, you might just put that one up there and uh, grab onto that. Some great stuff so far. Katie Lang, born in 61, same year as myself. She's 50. It says that she's 58 because she was born in November. I was born in January. But big country vocals and guitar. Years she's been active since 1981. But I think really when I think about her in the 2000s, she really became the person that she's become. Um, she did Golden Slumbers of the, of the Beatles. I mean, she would reach into anything, you know, Jackson, Hope and Glory, and uh, Joy Mitchell's River. Katie could take and twist songs that were already there and make it really her own. I love this uh, Disney film, Home on the Range. A little Patch of Heaven. She sang that too. She's made a number of uh, both uh, film and telly appearances, as you know. And I'm just looking at one where she went to Melbourne, Australia. She is an amazing uh, singer and very active. And I'm going to pull one up because I hadn't gotten one organized before now. The amount of tabs going on in this computer is amazing. Katie Lang, she's brilliant. As I'm waiting for that to pop up, I don't want to forget to tell you that you're more than welcome to uh, come to the school online. We know since um, there's going to be new rules even in Belfast and in Northern Ireland, we're going to have some changes already next week starting tomorrow um, in terms of social distancing and also in terms of moving between people's homes. So we're going to continue to keep this going because we have a feeling that we're going to be looking into the winter and many many people are going to be home as well and that's something that we don't always we don't hope that it happens but we also know that it really at this stage um, it's very likely that during our winter time we might see the indoors again so we want to keep this going all the way through and I've come up with all sorts of new ideas even since we came on tonight like the teens let's talk about teenagers who became famous in music over the uh, over the uh, over the decades so I'm just to actually pull some of her stuff up on here and I'm actually gonna put her um, one of her pages up here. I haven't been doing the much of that, putting people's pages up on here. But if you if you don't know much about her, it's always a good way to get to know um, what they're about and, and who they are if you haven't listened to any of their music before or it's just something completely new and you're not really sure much about it. Okay? Oh, my. As I'm looking through again and we look at some of these other ones... Um, some great I mean we you know we talked about Dolly Parton who's just carried on she even came to Ireland it's been a good few years now she came to the West and she actually sang they got her to stand up and do one of her songs and you know that couldn't happen without her um, a few songs uh, on the edit there another person that I think got lost sometimes in the um, in the mix because again sometimes you know, we, we go through these genre and the same thing can happen with rock and rollers too is Linda Ronstadt, an amazing, amazing um, country music singer. She was great stuff. And, you know, when she was born in 46, this is just after the war, of course, in Tucson, Arizona, and she was known for both folk and country music and kind of pushing a little bit of Latin and mariachi type items in there too. She had quite a reach so never feel like if you become a part of one, you know, era or one type of sound that you can't pull into other types of sounds as too. But Linda had an amazing, amazing career. She uh, basically announced her retirement in 2011, which was very unfortunate. Um, but basically that she had Parkinson's and she couldn't sing any longer. 
and she has, I think it's cerebral palsy of some type. She has a palsy of some type that didn't allow her to sing any longer. And she was, of course, sometimes people marry other people who are very, very well known. The former governor of California as well. And she was involved in films and had Grammys award year after year in the 70s and in the 80s. And I wanted to pull one of hers up right now because when you look at what she did, she was in the Pirates of Penzance. You know, you show up on The Simpsons. You know, of course, it'll have to be on The Simpsons. We can't be anywhere else, right? Um, Simple Dreams, Living in the USA, Get Closer, Feels Like Home. Oh, my God, I remember some of these. Cry Like a Rainstorm, amazing songs that Linda did. I'm just going to pull that one up in just a moment. Linda Ronstadt, an amazing, amazing female singer. And I could go on forever about the kind of music these people can do. Um, one of the songs, You're No Good, great song there. But I wanted to pull up one of her country songs rather than just a standard um, pop song. And there's I Fall to Pieces. Probably people would know that one. That would have been one of our earlier ones. When Will I Be Loved? And we're going to just put that up there for you, too. When Will I Be Loved? And I cannot believe how fast this hour has gone. It has just flown by. There you go. So have a listen to that if you haven't listened to Linda before, because I think before the 80s and 90s came around and we started talking about some, you know, female singers who had a little bit of an edge to them, Linda did too. And again, her activism probably was involved in some of that and what she did. So... And probably this song that I've just put up there, When Will I Be Loved, is probably one of the most well-known songs that that probably is known in terms of Linda Ronstadt. Blue Bayou, of course, would be another one. You're No Good, I mentioned that earlier. So there's a few of them out there. And if you haven't listened to her in a while, throwing you know, that on, it's kind of nice because you know, we put a whole record on. It's the middle of the afternoon on a Sunday, for example, and suddenly, you know, the energy picks you up. And, you know, if you had a long week especially, <laughs> these are the kinds of pieces of music you want to listen to. But if, again, if you want to actually do them, we're happy to help you because we understand how these kinds of voicings work here whether it be male or female, but we never want to forget that the lasses have produced some amazing music over the last number of years, and I'm just floored as I'm going through all of this, how much music we really are seeing from the country music genre. And as I mentioned, we're going to do, I believe next week we will continue on and do a combination of both male and female because I know when I went back to listen that I missed all sorts of people in there. Um, people like George Strait and Ricky Skaggs and Terry Gibbs and I think I barely mentioned Merle Haggard but you know we'll talk about them but there's other females that we haven't even begun talking about as well especially in this did we talk about Tammy Wynette? We even talk about Tammy Wynette as well. Um, her name needs to come up as well. And I could just go on and on, but I don't want to uh, to uh, go past it because well, that will be a next week, and we'll be talking about this next week, and we're going to really have an enjoyable time over this. And we've done both country music, we've done the jazz music, and we've, we've now, um, you know, the rock and roll. And uh, I probably will do blues, just full-on basic blues uh, music in its entirety uh, after this round of country music. 
So I want to thank you. And you go back and listen to all those wonderful singers. Again, don't forget, you can comment even later after this is over because we do post every one of these. Let us know what you thought about some of these uh, singers. Did it, you know, resonate with you? Did you like it? Did you something that you would want to sing? Has this changed your mind about country music um, from when you thought about it early on? Or would you say, well, um, I still like some of the other stuff as well. Um, there's no right or wrong at our school. The key is, is that you're happy with the way you sound. And that's our goal is to make you our star. So we've been so glad to have you. Listen to Shania again, Katie Lang, Linda Ronstadt. They're all great singers. And I'm just going to pull up my screen here and remind us that we've had the most amazing time tonight. So I'm going to write it down that this next week we will finish both male and female country artists. And if you hear some over the week and you want me to include that into next week's um, online version, let me know. I'll be happy to do that for you. It's been great, everyone. I hope you're doing grand. Again, we're thinking about you. Everybody's health is very, very important to us. And we know that some new lockdowns might come in, not just, of course, in our area. It's, it's happening in England and in parts of the U.S. and Australia. And, uh, you know, just every part of the world is being touched by this. So keep yourself well. Stay indoors if you need to. <laughs> um, you might have a you know, like a couple of drinks while you're at it. Of course, we're at the end of our night, but you might be in the middle of your day or maybe your day is turning over into tomorrow. So enjoy that as well. We'll see you next week. God bless and have a very lovely week. Slán which means so long in Irish. Bye-bye.